Hey, good morning, guys. So, look, I haven't done a stream for a while. There hasn't really been that much kind of going on. I've put out a couple of educational ones for the members, obviously. But, um, you know, in terms of YouTube or anything else, there's been, you know, nothing really to say. So, uh, look, in the grand scheme of things, right, for me, I'm going to say it again, there's no real change. What I've done um, this morning, uh, we actually joked around last night with ChatGPT in our prop firm channel, right? So we had a few little discussions and using ChatGPT. So what I decided to do this morning was actually run this question through ChatGPT, right? Now, this basically was taking the, you know, the swing high, the swing low, swing high, swing low, obviously from these particular swings. Uh, let me put something on to mark these up. So taking this, you know, this, 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 this and this right so kind of put this into a question um and and you know said look what, where are we in terms of the count right now this is something that i pushed out you know 18 months ago and beyond i talked about this with ryan at Uncomplication, and you know at that particular point i put out three options and the the big kind of difference and the big change the big kind of scenarios nothing's changed in, in any of those three options, right? So for me, this not, you know, this isn't going to 100K, this isn't going to zero. It's right now, we're still in this kind of sideways motion, right? Now, again, a lot of people don't understand the sheer scale of what we're talking about, right? Now, everyone's happy to talk about four-year cycles and the halving and all this kind of bullshit, right? When it comes to the charts, the charts are actually telling you all you need to know. Right? You don't need to look at on-chain matrix. You don't need to look at this data and that data and you know what these guys are doing. There's been CEOs of the ETFs, for example, and they've come out and said, you know, it's predominantly retail buy-in at the moment. So again, it's, it's not that there's lack of interest. It's lack of the correct interest. Right? Now, this is what will come with time. Right? And this is the beauty of it. This is the benefit of it. So, what I'd done was putting this question in, right? And I'll just go through what I put out, you know, and what kind of questions I was asking. So this obviously runs through the Elliott wave cycle, right? Now, in terms of analysis, the suggestion was that the wave A could have easily been 69 to the 15 level, right? So again, I'm just going to show you on the chart. So from the 69K, which obviously was this one, right, down to this level, is an A, right? And this is what ChatGPT is suggesting as a potential scenario, right? So again, I'm gonna say this, right? No change. I had three options back when, right? The first option that we were accumulating, I saw the accumulation needed longer, right? Now, this would have been better for the overall situation, the rally to come back and go, right? Because that meant we could have had a five wave move taking us up to the 100K and beyond, right? Unfortunately, we didn't get it, right? The second option was that the zigzag pattern, right? And, and that's the most common in Elliott wave kind of retracement type scenario. That would have taken us back to this pocket of liquidity, right? So at this particular stage, this was again, kind of the optimal position, right? And this was the option two, to come back in to create that kind of down low given us a much larger accumulation, right? The kind of the drop and the retest, and then ultimately go again, given us obviously a much, much bigger, right? So that would have been the, the, the best of the, the three options overall. The third option right, was the fact that we go up and we run out of steam as we get to the highs. Right? So again, if you run this in, put this at the 69K high, you know, we've kind of failed and failed and, and failed again, right? Now, the challenge for me, and, and this is what, again, you know, a lot of people who are thinking too short of a time frame, they think, oh, this is negative and this is, you know, anti-crypto and anti-Bitcoin, right? The, the people with, with less than half a clue, right? The problem for me is as the price rallies up, you are seeing the COT data kind of increase in terms of the shorts, right? This is the leverage funds. These are the big boys, the big players, right? And this goes back, like I said, for me, 18 months, you know, 24 months in, in some of these posts, right? Now, in terms of where we are, what we've done, the fact that we rallied the way that we did, we had this kind of fake out news around here, creating quite a large gap 
grand scheme of things. We then come to where the optimal B situation was for a zigzag pattern. And we kind of rallied through that. We then had the ETFs. So at this particular point now, we're sat in a position where we've got 12 ETFs approved. We've got a price multiplier. And we've had the halving. And yet we're still $337 above an all-time high that we saw back in 2021, right? So for me, the question is not where do you think we go? And the question is, why haven't we go? Right? Now, back to chat GPT. What this was suggesting is that obviously these waves right, could be massive. So the next question for me was, where was the question? Would it mean that if B, this is the question, would it mean that if B was completed at the 73835 level, which is the current all-time high, right, that this was an expanded flat correction, most likely, right? And the answer was yes. So at this particular point, what we now see is if we had the A down here and the B up high, right, we've got to be looking at a couple of clean levels, right? So we've got obviously gaps, we've got gaps, right? We've got a nice bit of liquidity there, we've got gaps, right? We've got massive liquidity there, right? And obviously we've got all the way back down. I kind of don't see this if I'm honest, right? I, I, I kind of think that we're not, you know, we, we're not likely to come down there, right? So for me, these are the obvious kind of areas, the obvious kind of plays, right? So the, the, these two really, for me, are the big, big kind of zone, the, the area of interest, right? So going back to the chat GPT, what I was asking and the reason for kind of asking this and showing this was that, you know, I want to see you know, what are the characteristics, what are the levels? I then come in and I ask about the Fibonacci relationship, right? So the next question, what are the normal Fibonacci relationships, right, in terms of an expanded flat? Now, I obviously, personally, I, I, I know all this, so I've traded, you know, Elliott Wave for 15 plus years. In terms of using ChatGPT, it's just to kind of highlight that it's not me saying this, it's, it's me kind of spitting in the information and saying, look, you know, if the price has done X and the price has done Y, what do you think, ChatGPT? Right? What, what, where do you think we are? And you know, ultimately, ChatGPT is basically saying, you know, what I've put out eighteen months ago. Right. So, in the grand scheme of things, the Fibonacci relations, right, all come down. And again, you, you know, you can go through this, pause the video, do whatever you want, right. You type this into ChatGPT yourself. In the grand scheme of things, right, the length of wave A. Right, and this is obviously the 69 down, right? So if we regard A, this is still for me, still only one of the three options, right? Option one, you know, I think that's gone in terms of the accumulation, right? So the, the bigger picture would mean it's a much bigger accumulation, right? Which you know is, is, is great for the long run, but it's not the now, it's not the immediate future, right? We then look at this level and we say, well, if we have a fib extension right we're going to have to go from the bottom to the top right so if we go here to here to here right we've basically come up and we've tagged you know 100 percent with a little bit of change that's hopium that's you know j j just retail wanting to get in that's a little bit of just you know can we make this happen and when you put this on the chart you see it like this it, it's almost beyond obvious how ridiculous this seems, right? This is a controlled move, very, very controlled move, right? And I'm gonna show you now next, you know, why and how and, and, and how this works, right? So one of the options is in and around this yellow region, right? Now, obviously we've talked about things like a distribution pattern, a distribution cycle, a schematic in terms of the Wyckoff distribution move. I talked about one of these here, I talked about one of these here, right? So look, in the grand scheme of things, if you were to have a larger scale move, there's nothing stopping us seeing a UT or a UTAD up to this region before we fall. Right? Now, clear levels for falling, obviously, you know, back to the Fibonacci relationships, we've got one, you know, this line, this cluster will start to create, you know, an area of interest here. I don't think we come all the way back down. Right? So back to ChatGPT. These are the kinds of levels and regions, right? Now, the next point was, this was looking at the 1618, this was looking at the 1, and this was looking at the 0 0.618, right? So, this basically spat out a couple of levels from 53 
obviously being one uh, of the length of E. We then had the kind of conclusion being 40,750, right? And we had the length of C being 33,085, right? So what I'd done was I, I put these on the chart, give it a pen, I put these on the chart, and I put these as three horizontal lines. One, two, three, right? Now, the orange one is one I'm going to talk about in a second, but the two green ones are the 33085, which I just mentioned here, and obviously the 40,750 being the range, right? So the point being is, you know, forget all my background, my technical experience, you know, the, the length of time I've been doing this and so on. Just looking at this as purely, if I was to go into ChatGPT and ask the question, where do you think Elliott Wave is right now? What kind of plot are we in? What type of cycle are we in? Where are we kind of on the map? The next area of interest in terms of liquidity is in, in and around this region, right? Now, what I find interesting is back in 2021, I believe, uh, maybe in early 21, maybe late 2020, I posted this post, right? Now, this for me was the first time, and I, I think I've mentioned this actually in the post, this was the first time seeing kind of institutional Bitcoin, right? And although you've seen kind of a shift from 2017 through to, well, kind of late 2017, early 2018, you saw the shift. That was predominantly venture capital, you know, angel investment. It wasn't really the, the trading element. This was more the investing element of Bitcoin, right? So I'm just going to leave this load a second. Yeah, this was February 2021, this particular post, right? Now, what I talked about in this particular post was a couple of key areas, a couple of key levels. I really want this to load as a whole, so I'm just going to leave that a second. A couple of key areas and a couple of key areas of interest, right? I'm going to click out of this. Now, what you can see, if I zoom in, so I'll show you this before it loads. You see this level here. This is 36. I think it was 36. Uh, actually, it's down to 36, 109, 91. Right? What I'm talking about in the post, and I, I hope this loads. I don't understand why it's not loading in a second. Um, but this was obviously a key area for the institutional players back then, right? Now, I, again, because of the bigger cycle, and and you know we're not talking about a four-year cycle. We're talking about the cycle of Bitcoin, kind of in its current situation from inception through to now. Right? These numbers, a lot of people can't comprehend the, the amount of time that this takes, right? And, and the amount of time that it can take, right? If we look at these levels, right? The price, you know, this was back, like I said, this was February, 2021, right? So I'm gonna play this forward if this will allow me to play, probably not on a four hour time frame. Anyway, the longs and shorts of it is the price comes back, the price you know, plays around, the price goes up, the price comes back down. And this level is a pretty key influential level, right? Almost throughout the history, right? We, we kind of create this first move here, which was the very first you know, reaccumulation. We come back down, we kind of play in that area. We then break out, we come back down, we play in the area before breaking through, right? We come back and actually sit on top of the zone before rallying up, which means, you know, this is where for me, a lot of that kind of support will potentially come back in. Right? So the main thing right now is we are seeing potentially an A, B, C corrective move, right? which was the worst case scenario of the three scenarios that I've given. Right? So again, no change, right? no change, no change, no change. Right? This isn't about to explode to 100K, 250K. Oh, we're off to a million. And the reason for that is how? Right, and, and these are the questions you've got to ask yourself. How do you get there? Right, you've got people like BlackRock, you know, uh, by it's not BlackRock themselves buying, BlackRock, BlackRock have, have actually created an, an enabler, right, and an enabling tool for retail and pension funds and so on to start investing in this ETF, as well as the other 11 ETFs that were approved at the same time. Right, these are enablers, these are not the individual company buying. Right. These are, you know, people trusting, putting their faith in companies like BlackRock to say, we'll, you know, we'll buy a share in this ETF. Right. Now, obviously, at this particular point, 
like I said to you earlier, we've had CEOs saying, oh, well, it's predominantly retail at the moment. We've had the price multiplier, we've got the halving, and we've had these 12 ETFs approved. We should have seen this price break through with momentum, right? with, with incredible momentum. At the moment, we've got this kind of ascending move, right? We've kind of peaked the top, we've hit a little bit of hopium, and then we've kind of fallen back below these levels. Right? So all in all, for me, I still think the ABC move is probably the most likely in terms of the three scenarios. Right? Now, coming back, you know, even further, um, I've talked about these levels. This obviously goes back to March this year. You know, this is the same kind of region. There's a lot of liquidity in and around that region, um, which obviously would kind of induce a larger, much larger move, bigger picture, right? So the way that I'm seeing this right now is pretty much no change, right? Pretty much, you know, similar kind of situation. We've had all the kind of the good news we kind of need more stuff, more, more, more input, more liquidity, more interest, really, before we start seeing moves higher. If we don't see these moves higher, we don't see, you know, new inflows, you know, massive, massive levels of inflow. Now, again, the question for me is if the price was down low at the ETFs, you know, why haven't we seen much larger inflows? in the ETFs. And, and and these are not me being negative. These are me being truthful, right? This isn't me trying to, to win, you know, YouTube popularity. This is ultimately the point being is nothing's changed, right? And you could see this from a mile away. Now, the last thing I'm going to show you before closing this out is the crypto COT. Right? Let me see if this is still live, still, still current. Um, for some reason, it's lagging a little bit this morning. So we've got obviously a couple of screenshots, leverage funds is what I'm waiting for, for this to load. We've got a couple of screenshots here. Right? Now the leverage funds, and, and this is again where you got to think bigger picture. Asset managers, right, are net long. And then there's no doubt, there's no question, you know, for me, I see this as a much bigger picture, right? The asset managers are net long, right? Now the asset managers are, you know, your ETF funds and, and so on, so on, and a, a lot of bigger players. But these guys are looking at a, you know, 10 year, 15 year, 20 year horizon. Right? In terms of the leverage funds, early on, when I started sharing this type of information, a lot of retail traders who clearly don't understand, you know, for them, this was, oh, look at the big boys getting wrecked. And the truth of the matter is, who's selling? at a premium after buying at a discount to the retail that are trying to push this to 100k. Right? The answer's in this picture, the answer's in this chart. These guys are profiting by selling premium. Right? The value area sits down and around still around the 36 to 40k level for me personally. Right? Now, at this particular point, you can do with what you want this information. But for me, this is why I'm going to say again, no change, right? So bigger picture right now, I still think that there's a, a larger pullback. I think we could potentially see a UTAD. I've talked about obviously the, the larger move up in terms of a move coming up. But I don't see any sustainable move up, which means we're very unlikely to ping, you know, 100K, 150K, 250K in the near future, right? I think obviously the liquidity is more likely to sucker some more newer traders in at a break of a high that will ultimately be the ut or the utad depending how early or not we are in the distribution schematic and then ultimately a fall back down to some kind of sensible levels of liquidity that should potentially clear these shorts um from a, a cot perspective and then ultimately give these bigger players a chance to be buying soaking this up on a larger scale all right so I'm going to leave it like that. Again, thanks for watching, guys. If you watch this to the end, great. If not, then, um, you know, we, we know where you stand. So, uh, again, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next stream. Cheers all.